I could be sitting in my office waiting, uh, waiting to see the next patient and a drug company representative can come in and give me a nice glossy one single page thing about a new drug. And I may pretend to myself that this is education and I am now re uh, ready and willing to prescribe this drug and in fact that's what the, the drug company expects me to do. Um, I think the, the uh, news releases are the same for journalists. It's placebo. It's you are in a hurry, you need to meet your deadlines and this Oh, thank God I got a news release, right? And I can use this news release and gets me off the hook. Um, I would assume, I would start by the assumption that everything on the news release is false. And if it's not false, it's incomplete. And if it's not incomplete, it's misleading. Um, and if you start from that, 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 that point on, and you're going to put your name on that byline, God, you, you're, you're just being part of that machine. Um, I would, I would uh, recommend, I, I recommend to most of my trainees not to read medical journals, period. Uh, if you if you subscribe or you're making a mistake, you're waiting for the for the post office to tell you what to read instead of deciding, looking at the problems your patients have and then going and looking for the evidence in relation to that. I think journalism should follow s sort of a similar uh, situation. I know that conditions on the newsroom are different, but it should follow the same idea. You're interested in robotic surgery? Go and investigate robotic surgery. Don't take up the news release from the, the, the company or the latest hospital that just bought one and put that out because you're not you're going to get it wrong. I mean, that possibility of getting it right with a news release is very close to zero.